Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kura Isagami, your resident tinker and meta rotter, and this is the Meta Rot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Well, once again, just as we did last week, we are picking up right where we left off with part three. Well, in all technicality, 2.5, but details, details, with the with the legendary Neon Genesis Evangelion collaboration ongoing through the month of January. In the last couple of weeks, we saw the initial announcement, as well as the release of Units 0 and 01. Last week, we saw the introduction of Units 02 and 05. This week, we see the introduction of two more units to kind of round out the set of six, as well as the second half of the ticket-based event that started as well to unlock even more rewards going forward. Let's go ahead and jump right into part three, kind of highlighting what was going on this week and what to expect. Starting of which with the gacha banners, as I mentioned, we are going to be seeing the last two models of the set that was revealed with the initial trailer um, to, hi to highlight this week's bonuses and events, as well as kind of curb out the final tail end of this collab as a whole. Starting up, we have EVM04 Mark VI with a kit of Colonel, Ghost, Power Hammer, Biped Legs, and the leg ability of Blowbeat. And then, in a little bit of a change in events, we are getting not another unit, but this time an Angel from the series. This one, EVM05 Tenth Angel with a kit of Perfect Guard, Terminate, Armor Drain, Float Legs, and the leg ability of Mascot. Now, much akin to EVM01 and 02, Tenth Angel will also be the only other model to showcase and, and, and debut a brand new skill into the game, which is called Terminate. Simply explaining it, I kind of had to ask a friend for this one and got a lot of feedback, and thankfully it's not as hard as I thought it was, but simply put, it behaves just like Destroy from the early games, which means if you catch a foe in the back, it spells good night for the part that you target, which makes it a lot easier to use in terms of what we've seen for variants of Destroy, especially with the introduction of Unit 02 with Disaster. So it's going to be very interesting to see if these two units do highlight any new changes to the meta, especially with Determinate being a much easier form of Destroy to use if you can time it right. But when it comes to destroy, timing is essentially everything and always has been, so that will be nothing particularly new for any seasoned vets or meta rotters that have been around for a while and playing the games. Units, uh, the Mark VI on the other hand, definitely is going to be packing some pretty heavy heat and firepower, so going to once again be excited to see if those two will stand and pack up to anything that, that will change the current meta especially given that in this coming update here very soon, we will also be getting a massive update to a lot of skills. Now, at the introduction of the EVM units, and it is also worth noting before I continue, that, much like with previous weeks, units 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 5 will be sticking around to the end of the month. So if you find yourself at a lack of rubies and probably can only pull one feasibly, at this point, we have all the models and the meta rotters available, and this will be your chance to kind of choose who you want to really take home as your go-to prize, um, because there are a lot of gacha banners this round, which has kind of annoyed some of the players to a point because of that, but that is an issue that I digress on and may tackle at a later date. Now, aside from the EVM units, however, we are also getting a couple reruns of well-known units uh, native to Metarot S, starting of which was the original OG model from Metarot S, debuting all the way back from the game's launch, FSL-01 Fancy Ale, with a kit of Bug, Break Hammer, Napalm, Blight Legs, and the Charm Leg Ability. Then, in a relative recent uh, introduction, uh, would be KGC-0 Evil Rex, the King Cheetah type, with a kit of Hide Blow, Slash, Pile, Five Head Legs, and the Leg Ability of Spearhead. Now, both of these models also pack some very good skills to make use of as well, Interruption Based especially. Fancy Ale in particular is a master at this, between having probably one of the highest heat stats for a bug type skill in the game, has been very well known for being irritating in that respect. Break Hammer also very good for any particular heavy punish if you need it. Flight Legs for good mobility. Evil Rex is pretty much just a slew of very solid melee skills you really can't ever go wrong with using anywhere. So with either of these models, you really can't ever go wrong with going one or the other. But it is worth noting that because we are still technically in a collab, it is going to be best recommended that you prioritize the collab units first. Because 
Unlike Fancy Ale and Evil Rex, when the collab units disappear, we probably will not be seeing them ever again, if at all, anytime in the near future. So it's worth it's always worth collecting them first and then maybe going after either of these if you have resources to spare after collecting everything, if you decide to go that far. With the fierce battles this week, it's going to be much lower key in terms of what we've seen, but a couple of old faces we actually have not seen in the cycle for a while. Starting of which is MNT0 Flat Stake with a kit of Triple Virus, Sea Legs, and the Acrobatics Leg ability. Behind him, RAY04 Arago Star, the Crayfish type, with a kit of Triple Beam, Wheeled Legs, and the Excel Leg ability. And then last but not least, LDD03 Ptolemy with a kit of Scope, Rifle, Gatling, Biped Legs, and the Leg ability of Gunman. Now, as I mentioned, this week's Fierce Battles are going to be much lower key in favor of the event that is ongoing, but it is still worth collecting these units just for the sake of having them. If you are relatively new to the game or just starting out, it never hurts to have extra parts in your, in, in your library just in case. That being said, if I did have to give an MVP of the week to anyone, meaning this is one you definitely want to make sure you collect more than anyone else, I would have to give it to Ptolemy given that even though Virus it can be very useful for stunt, for uh, turn locking and turn skipping, and Arago Star definitely does have mobility on his side, Ptolemy definitely takes home the cake when it comes to having the best uh, all-round versatility, especially for female models, where a lot of parts like that are a little hard to come by in the conventional and permanent pools. Now, with the event itself, much like last week where we got more rewards on, uh, in comparison to week one, this week we have even more rewards, which means if anyone's been playing since the beginning, we will have access to take home three, count them, three bonus event reward medals through the through the course of this collaboration event. Five alternative alt skins for the collab, this week showcasing Fancy Ale and Evil Rex, which are the highlighted rerun banners for this week, as well as a third profile banner to, to showcase and kind of show the world and players that you were part of this event and this is what you took out of it. In addition to this, we also can take home rewards such as the Spy Medal, which has a mastery in melee, defense, and setup, with leg masteries in biped, float, and C. And then of course, we also have an opportunity to take home an extra Meta Rotter, rare rank of Dr. Armand, using a collaboration skin. So it is going to be definitely worth farming this event for the big rewards just for the sake of collecting them even if, if this event is, has been rather demanding in, in terms of previous collabs and events that we've gone through thus far. These are still good times to collect on a lot of resources, a lot of EXP, and a lot of very nice rewards you probably will not be able to see again. On topic of the event, much like last week, because this is technically 2.5 of the Part 3, um, this, is, this, this event also will be ticket-based, much like last week. This week highlighting the red and the gold tickets. So as you see here, Evil Rex and Fancy Ale will be highlighting the, the head bonuses at plus three each when using them. The Meta Riders Hisaki and Arase basic forms will be packing a plus two bonus. The Fierce Battles will be packing a plus one ticket to each, a plus one for each part used across the team for the red tickets. The gold tickets, which is a little bit of a source of controversy whenever they did these in the past, Highlighting those will be Mark, will be the Mark 6 and the 10th Angel, highlighting the plus 3 bonus for the gold tickets, with Unit 0 highlighting the plus 1, similarly to Unit 01 highlighting the plus 1 of the silver tickets. And then of course, uh, Meta Rotter Iku highlighting the plus 3 in the collab skin for the gold tickets, and the SR Meta Rotters and Dr. Armand rare rank highlighting the plus 1 each. So, much like with last week's event as well, this event is going to be mixed parts encouraged, so you do not want to use pure sets where possible and spread load your parts across the team to maximize your bonuses. That means if you manage to collect, say, Fancy Ale, you don't want to use Fancy Ale as a pure set and instead spread her parts across the team, say, head and legs to one and an arm to the other two, or however you decide to mix it up. Now, we did also get a little bit of a teaser and a, and a reminder of what is on is what of what is upcoming, and that is on January twenty third, which is um, which is a week from yesterday, will mark the third anniversary of Metarot S's release. So they're going to, to they're, they're, I highly suspect they're going to be highlighting a lot of really big events to highlight that for that week and honor it and celebrate. 
But highlighting, but kind of going ahead of that, they did choose to release special uh, super rare meta rodders to celebrate it for Arase and Hisaki, which are the two uh, main characters and protagonists of Metarot S's story. For the super rare versions of these two, if you choose to go after them, Arase is highlighting a skill that reduces damage by 10% for two turns, as well as buffs heat and cool by 20%. This can last, oh, I'm sorry, I, I misread that. It can last for up to two hits or four turns, whichever comes first, and then it expires. Isaki, on the other hand, is highlighting a reduction in, in Metaforce charge requirement by 30%, plus a speed boost of plus 150, which is definitely going to be noticeable once that skill is activated. Now, I don't quite know how that uh, Metaforce reduction will, will ask in terms of, say, standard models or meta change requirements, but it is nice to see two very good skills being made available as well. If you choose to go after them, that is completely your choice, but I still encourage going after the collaboration stuff just for the sake of being of making sure you can take home what you can, since again, once collabs are gone, we will not be seeing them again. On the community front, we are still always looking for translators to assist us with ongoing projects, such as the Metarot 3 and the Metarot Reloaded manga translations. Metarot 3 has been making good leaps and bounds, has slowed down just a little bit, as Variant and the others have decided to maybe consider working on Metarot 4 whenever they get the chance, and just kind of come back and tackle 3 whenever we have translators. Because much of the menus and the game mechanics are finished, and the story is translated fully in English up to Chapter 1. If you'd like to see more work on this done, or like to even see it to completion, we are always looking for assistance with this. You're more than welcome to reach out to me, or join us in any of our communities listed, and we can get you in touch with the right people to fill you in on what has been done, and what still needs done up to this point. Now, with the weekly art highlights here on the MNN, I chose to do this piece by my buddy Mono, a Twitter user at MonoZero, highlighting an old OG favorite of anyone who's watched the anime or even played the original games, and that is the old original ghost type, Misty Ghost. Now, in particular, Misty Ghost has been getting a little bit of a spotlight this week, not primarily for being introduced in Metarot S yet, hopefully, but in particular because the episode of the anime that he debuted and starred in is officially airing on the, on the YouTube channel right now. So it is nice to see more work highlighting another OG from the early days. Uh, wonderful work, Mono, and I can't wait to see more. And this Twitter user here, Pikugatu, who I do highlight fairly often here as well with the art highlights, highlighting this piece of, of Cyan Dog, but not quite as, you, as you're used to seeing him. This design and style for Cyan Dog actually was his design for the Metarotter Rintaro manga, as well as his design used in Metarot Navi, which took a very starkly different art style and approach, which a lot of people actually do really like, as well as myself. And I would honestly like to see this version of Cyan Dog kind of make a comeback in Metarot S as kind of like an alt skin for him, say, one way or the other. So wonderful work to the both of you if you are watching this, and if you would like to see more Metarot art in your feed, definitely do give both of these fine friends of mine a follow. But with all that being said, I do believe that covers everything here for this week. Not a lot to highlight since much of the information was kind of given over the last couple weeks, aside from of course any information pertaining to events going live this week. But all the same, I do appreciate you all for stopping by, just as you always do. If you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the Metarot News Network page or the Metabots Forever communities on there. You can also join us on Discord in the link provided and in the comments below. This is where you can keep an even closer ear to the ground on the action. This includes any new merchandise, my weekly updates, videos, fan updates, translations, art, you name it. That's the first place you'll see it before it goes anywhere else. You can also reach out to me personally on Twitter at IsagamiKura, so if you have any questions, feedback, or comments, or even have ideas for things I could maybe cover in the future. Or, if you are a VTuber or YouTuber and would like to collab with me and maybe guest host here on the MNN with me, I would absolutely love to have you. So feel free to reach out, stop on by, and say hello. I leave my DMs open for that very reason. I do also give these wonderful other friends of mine a follow as well. Twitter user Rosa at StardustRosa, who actually started working on a new, um, I'm just gonna say, art series highlighting the uh, child of Iki and Arika, if I do recall correctly, highlighting what would happen if she found an old Metubi and rebuilt him, kind of for a second generation new adventure kind of thing. 
And do also give my buddy Metarotter Lux a follow as well, who likes to do a lot of the statistical feedback on how Metarot S behaves or how events are to pan out if you want to make the most of the rewards. So definitely worth giving him a follow as well. But with all that being said, I do appreciate you all for stopping by just as you always have. That being said, until next time, this is your host, Kurt Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.